Well, this board sitting underneath the strake um, reasoned that it is probably the best position to place the board and let the rest of it free span to give the curvature I want on the underside of the, of the strake. And the board is placed at 51 inch, at, there's one foot forward of the 51 inch mark that we showed you earlier. Now I'm going to take you to the other mark, the 26 inch mark, and show you the installation of this um, piece of aluminum extrusion. as it floats. The back end of the spar is up this tight and in position against the, the um, side of the fuselage and against the main spar itself. Or at least I thought it was. I'll check that again here and make absolutely certain that that is the case. That's a little better. Check the inboard end. It's still on the, the right line. Now I'm going to put it here without pushing on it. Take one of the Clecos here, put it to the side of the skin. Ran into something there, something substantial. It's a piece of epoxy. If I'm careful, I don't pull this Clico through as I'm tightening it up. It's conceivable that that would certainly handle the little bit of weight that it's going to see shared amongst all three of these little clips. I'm going to put the other two in and I'll be back with you in just a moment. Guess who? Yes, it works. It worked beautifully. camera stand that doesn't work beautifully. This is sitting right on it. There's almost no tension on it whatsoever. Now the reproduction of this on the opposing side is very simple. Actually we're looking at it. It's just above us. Level on extrusion. The reason the level's on it is that um, the extrusions, the laundrons, need not necessarily be absolutely parallel, and we're assuming that they're not. So we put the extrusion across and we measured down after we've leveled it. So when we set up these points for the opposing side, we'll go to 79, 51, and 26 as on this side, and measure down from the extrusion to the inside surface of the, the strake in the appropriate positions. Now the ones that we just did here, that one, that one and the other one, and 26. And uh, you'll measure down from above, up there on the launcher on, and uh, in that area, and in that area, and you will reproduce the bottom curvature of the two strakes precisely, and of course in the bottom of the spar as you get them. And again, in this front area, from there, the center line projected six inches, producing a level water line on the leading edge. Next step, epoxy. If you were wondering why this gear's been sitting here all this time and why I haven't talked about it, wonder not any further, because what I wanted to show you here was what this looks like and how your gear relates to the inside of this strake and as it should look. It's up inside the strake. You have plenty of room for all of the things that you need to get in there. That's how it's supposed to work and how it's supposed to look. Minor discrepancies here from side to side. Fret not. It have no, has no bearing on anything. The gear needs to be somewhat near the middle of the depression. It can be plus or minus um, three-eighths of an inch per side. No problem.
going to be some things that you want to establish before you stick everything together. Leading edge, yep, I like that. Distance fore and aft, established with a Clico through the a little forward section of your main spar, where it's glass to glass. So that's a, a reference point. We're going to because we're going to pull the wing off in a moment to make sure that we have access to everything as we clamp the main spar to the strake. Um, but that's what you want to do. And I I did something a moment ago. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it or not, but you um, you might be able to see it. I'm gonna. I've brushed resin onto the main spar. And I've brushed resin onto the strake. And I push it up there. You can hear it. I rub it down. It takes about five seconds for the the wet bond to fail. <coughs> so that you get a feel for how much resin you're really going to need between the two surfaces. In this case, um, resining the strake first and the spar and then putting a bead of flocks down the center and then putting a board down the middle with silver tape on the upper, upper surface just in case stuff squeezes out and ends up on top of the board. You don't want to bond it in place. Um, you get some feel for how much material you're really going to need. And you've got three plies of carbon fiber here that um, is going to create a little bump. But your whatever you use here is going to it's going to cause an averaging of the of the material transferred. There's going to be basically a valley right in here that'll fill with flocks. And it'll make a long slope, so there'll be more flocks in this area left than in the rest of the area. You should put enough flocks in there where you don't have to gradiate how much material you have from one end to the other. Just put a constant fill across there, and where it needs to be left behind, it will by itself. <coughs> I'll be back with you in a moment after I remove the wing and. Uh, We'll show you putting the flocks on. Okay, we've got the uh, <coughs> straight all floxed in place. We're floxed. The bottom of the spar is, is sanded and prepped. And uh, I made one mistake that you won't make, because I'm going to tell you how not to make it. I brushed the resin onto the side of the fuselage first. And that is the mistake. Now, I've been lucky in that the resin has not been flowing down below the bottom. I fudged the, the strake laterally towards the inboard end of the wing. And in doing so, <coughs> cut the gap down that I'm going to have to modify and fill later. So, the result is that I've got a big gap between the side of the fuselage and the strake itself. So I'm going to put the strake in place with the, with the flocks between the spar and the strake, which I really don't have much of a choice about. And then I'm going to put uh, plastic tape, duct tape, between the two on the underside, between here and here. Of course, I'm going to have to have dry surfaces to do that. Then I'm going to brush the, the epoxy in place and put the micro in. And we'll show you that in a moment. Well, here's a record of what we did to squeeze the bottom. That inboard end is because we didn't have a board long enough to go from one end to the other and clamp it. And here on the outboard end, we've got one, two, three clamps. That's the clamp is squeezing the spot cap area in the end. Be careful that if you have a foam core in that area, not to crush it. And you can just see the flux squeezing through. Let's get a close up on that and show you what the flux looks like. There it is coming out the back. Camera can't make up its mind. There it is. You want to see that? It's full length. Use the music. We tolerate it. Uh, now I'll show you the inside surface. That's the inboard end. We'll pan back and show you the outboard end. There's flocks 
squeezing out of every aperture. No exclusions to that. It's coming out of everywhere. You notice the side fuselage has been freshly sanded. I got the resin out of there. Now I'll go to the underside and tape it up and we'll put the micro in place. Okay, back. Well, we've got all the squeeze out we're going to get. And there's the bottom of the strake aft. Let's see the tape patching up those areas where there's not enough material. Or we've got a span there. And we all go all the way up to a well short of 79 up there because the strake now fits perfectly up in that area. We don't need any tape to span those areas. Now we're going to brush some resin into that gap like I had before. Fill it with dry micro. We'll show you that in a moment. Well, there's the micro. It's the first bit I've put in. It's a little on the wet side, so I've gone to a drier mix. And I'll show you how it goes in here. You can see the resin's brushed in there real well. Put in a little bit at a time so that you fill all the holes and, and uh, small areas. Not one big pile, because you will capture air underneath it if you do. the sides. I'm putting a little more fill on the areas that I just where it was so wet. That's how it should look. Do the whole thing in that fashion. And then the next step, we'll come back and I'll show you taping the whole thing. And I'm gonna, I've got the epoxy brushed on in the appropriate areas. That's between the spar and the strake. And in this area here, we're going to do one further aft than that. Yep. First one goes right here. Should we lap that core real well? Rub it down good. The old epoxy on the on the foil trick so I can rub out the air. the hard part, which is getting the foil. Up off the edge. Pull the foil. Stipple out the air. Good. Now we're going to shut down the tape here in a moment and show you the attachment to the spar. with you in a moment. There's the spar interface. See if we're still running. Kicking the power box. OK, 
I'll wrap across here. Do all these intersections just like you see. We'll do the we'll do the spot in the back up along that rib there with pieces, and the we won't go any further than the vertical section on the forward portion of the gear leg well, and that's all we're going to do. We'll uh, be back with you after we've got the tapes in place. Okay, now we'll show you the results of our work. Tapes in the corner. Horizontal, vertical, horizontal, and well, before we go to the vertical on the gear well, we'll go back over here to the spar to strake interface. Zing. Come on, focus, you mama. Let's go. Got it. Can't see the, the back edge here, but. There it is. Okay, see there's a little bit of flux in the corner. Transition. All right, now we'll move to, oops, there's that section I told you about. Vertical, don't go any further forward than that because that's just going to get cut out of there eventually. And there is the tape. There's the front face of the canopy. Measure down, see, bango. Go all the way forward. There's the back edge of the, see that pencil line there? Tape's so the hair short there, but it's not going to matter. It's going to be accessible when you go to do the close out around the edge. And the forward section is just micro between the two, and that will that will be cured tomorrow morning. We'll pull all those pins off the bottom side and pull the tape and do a two ply bid tape to the bottom side. See you tomorrow. Good morning. Clamps have been removed. I sanded the edges of the tapes. It's hard enough for me to pull the pins and do the bottom side. So I'm going to do just that. Remove the pins. Whoa! <coughs> Give them a smack with something that. <coughs> <coughs> you don't care about. <coughs> and pull the tape, plastic tape. <coughs> Excuse me. Frog in my throat. Tape held up beautifully. Didn't sag, didn't move. Did what it was supposed to do, which was retain the micro from moving. We kept it in here about 70 degrees last night, and the micro is still soft, so we really don't have much to do as far as sanding or prepping this, aside from maybe a little bit of shaping where these tabs were. <coughs> so two plies of bid, one inch onto the strake, one inch onto the side of the fuselage, and I've sanded enough out here where I can do fill later, so I don't uh, have to sand the glass later. And I would encourage you to do that. So, back with you as we uh, put a tape on there. Okay, we're back. <coughs> we're going to show you what we do for transferring measurements. Get the tape. Oh, I got a little here. <coughs> it's level. We're at the 79 station. Any one of the stations here can, will uh, suffice. I'm going to come back just a touch so I can get to the front face. Go down to the inside, give them a dimension. Seven and a half inches plus a 32nd. And he reproduces the same thing on the opposite side, making sure, of course, that this is level and that the airframe is level. We do that on all the points. There's actually four. There's uh, 26, 51, 79, and then six inches right up here just after the instrument panel. Making the left side identical to the right side. He'll take the 
the board that I used last night <coughs> and the little pieces of extrusion these pieces here and he'll do the same thing on the left side that I did last night it might not be a bad idea at this stage is to drop the top strake on and make certain that it fits it should conform to all the surfaces. It should match the top side of your spar. All your Clico pinholes should still mate. You're going to have a little problem up here in the front. For a very simple reason. Because you've got this lip right here that sticks down and it can no longer go where it used to go. So that's going to have to get trimmed away so it'll drop down and fit flush. But it's pretty easy to see that it's going to do so very nicely. Fit the way it's supposed to fit. And this is, of course, before you commit to ribs or any other further work. Now, Barry's going away on the other side, and he reminded me that the dimensions that we just showed you go to the top side of the strake. So you have to add, the, you measure the thickness of your strake along the edge, add that to it, and put the mark down. Don't forget that. It's an important issue. You'll have a, a strangely fitting strake if you don't. Okay, you hear in the background the sound of sanding. <clears throat> and back here, all the way in the back, in the wheel, in the gear leg well. We're not going to do any glassing in here at all. I may put a tape in here at the moment, but primarily we're going to we're going to do this section first. You see, I've sanded out here on the primer quite a ways, so that after the tapes go on, I can micro down to here and micro out to about here. It'll save me a sanding process later. The reason we're not going to do anything in the well for now is something I'll show you right now. Here you see there's quite a bit of glass hanging out. The uh, laminates that uh, side of the fuselage and the gear leg tab, you can see them both sitting down there. We're going to cut that all off for the saw. We're going to cut the vertical portion off on the left there and the vertical portion there hanging out on the right so that it'll be flush all the way along, but it'll be flush only up to the bottom of this cutout. We'll extend the line out here this way on both sides and cut straight up, straight over, and straight down. Flush with the bottom of the straight. We're going to run plies of glass from this face around the edge, this face around the edge and from here up and around the under underside but it's all too difficult to do with this big honking table in the way this uh yeah oops. this table here but we're going to wait till it's these the airplanes upside down um probably until it's upside down before we actually do this land it's going to be a whole lot easier to cut that stuff away without everything uh, without being upside down so we'll start with a laminate and we'll show you that in a minute. As I mentioned before, we're not going to do the inside of the wheel well, or gear leg well, but we are going to do this area. I could let this sit for weeks before having to do this section because we're not depending on this for stability of the area. The inside tapes will do that during the assembly of the ribs and the interior sections. But since this micro is green, I thought I might as well take this opportunity to save myself a sanding step. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to put micro in this corner because I don't want to contaminate this surface or this surface with micro. So I'll just put a little bead of flocks on top of here to make the radius. <clears throat> and then I'm going to put the tape down. So I'll be back with you in just a few moments. Well, blocks has been added. 
see if we can get a tight shot up there at the back, up at the edge. Just, just enough to cover any imperfections that are in the micro. Uh, I haven't done that edge yet, so I need to go back there and do just a little spot. But everywhere else, covered. Up in the front, right in there. You go ahead and take your tape all the way to the front. And then when you do your leading edge tape, you'll cut it in half where the other one wraps. Not a problem. And the leading edge is sitting up there because the, the micro underneath hasn't been removed. Now we've got one more little bit of tape to do and I thought we'd show you the actual process. I also want to show you that not all of Britain's rock and roll is atonal. Okay, tape's in place. do all the standard stuff. Brush on the resin, rub the foil. We've generated three airfoil templates to represent each position where the ribs go. Now you'll ha you will receive these templates and won't have to go through this same monkey motion that I went through. They all work pretty well. So I'm going to have to distribute for just a moment. I won't be too much longer with this. Now they all sit in there very nicely, very neatly. We've got one over here. And from those same templates, I generated six ribs. And those ribs look just like the cardboard. There's the ribs. You'll get stock material as well. They've been sanded one inch all the way around. They've been fitted. We have sanded both sides, sanded all the interfacing areas. There you go, you can see them all. Let's give you a close up on those ribs. Back in the back, you can see where all the sanded areas are. Back there in the corners. Now there's a, something that you can do that I didn't do that'll save you all kinds of problems. Is right here on the inboard end of the wing, right there. What you'll need to do is to cut a piece of particle board or plywood, stuff it in here, and um, uh, bondo it in place, and bondo it to the, or drywall screw through the skin, into the, this piece of wood. It'll be cut to the rib shape here on the end, so that it'll sustain the outboard end of the, <coughs> of the strake's position relative to the wing, so that you don't have to have the wing on here to prop it up. I don't know if you can see the prop underneath. Yeah, there's that prop underneath. It's a piece of wood down below. We've got it propped up. Well, that piece of plywood in there will negate the necessity of that. And that hold it in position while you put these ribs in place with the wing off. Gives you much better access to all this stuff. Um, now that the ribs have been made and, the, and everything's trimmed and everything is sanded, we will take and place brush resin on the, into the into the honeycomb here. You won't have this kind of rib material. There's only two or three builders that have this type. Um, you'll brush resin into the, all the interfacing areas and put micro, right, and dry micro, brush resin onto the surface where you want the, the micro to go. Put it in place, squish it down and run drywall screws, which you'll have pre-drilled and done earlier, 
you can put this position, draw a thin line on either side, drill the hole through, and I suggest two um, from the bottom and one diagonally in from the top. Now between the end of this rib and this surface, I'll use a, a mixture, a thin mixture of flox. I'll cut a hole in this corner for my conduit to exit. And then I'll stick it in place, clean the micro off, and put a two-ply bid tape all the way around the perimeter. Now micro as a fillet in this area is of sufficient strength to handle all the loads. Um, we've substantially overbuilt this. Um, and we don't want to add any, any extra weight if we don't have to. Micro will be sufficient for your fillets between skins and these surfaces. I'll be back with you for the next step. I just measured this, and you have the equivalent of 260 inches of 2-inch wide tape necessary. What that will work down to is that to get that equivalent, you'll need two plies of glass, 45 inches long, 16 inches wide. Essentially, you need 520 square inches of tape, so any multiplier thereof that'll work out of the width of your cloth will work just fine. But it's 260 inches by 2 inches wide. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to brush resin onto the bottom of this, down its entire length, stack dry micro on it, and then squish it in place carefully, trying not to wipe yeah, <laughs> sure did. the micro off as I put it in place. It wouldn't hurt to um, bevel one edge of your rib so that you can push micro in from the opposing side, clean it up, and then lay your tape down. Uh, this, t this one here obviously doesn't, won't need that. It'll go, it'll go in from the edge, squishing in all three interfaces without wiping off the, the material. This one, as well, I believe, can be slid in and squished down without wiping the micro off of any surfaces. This one either creates some extra space so it'll come down in, or bevel the edge so you can push the micro in from the other side. Two plies of bid, and the holes have been drilled. There's one hole here, one hole here, and one in from the top. On this end, closer to the other ribs, Sorry for the skewed screen here. Make you sick. Give you the leans. Uh, one hole here, one hole here, one hole here. One at the top, one at the back, one here. Now, if you've got an area that, that is spanning slightly, don't suck the skin in. This, if you've got it correctly in position and you've got it correct out here at the outboard end, don't suck the skin to the rib. Uh, just the screw will keep the rib, the rib from moving back and forth. I've chosen places particularly where my rib is touching the skin so I can tighten up without distorting uh, the skin underneath against my rib. Keep that in mind. Um, now, one thing I should mention here before we go any further. <coughs> we have already drilled and tapped this rib. I cleared these holes through here so that my screws can enter this. So I'm going to back this up later with another layer of foam against this surface and put two plies of glass over top of it so that it's impossible for me to go through this rib with a, even with a long screw and inside your fuel tank. Um, another consideration is that after you've got each rib done and in place, stick it in, run your drywall screws into the rib, and then put your top back on to make sure that you don't have any retrimming to do. Retrimming can be a real problem as you're trying to work the surfaces down. You invariably end up removing too much material. So do it one rib at a time while the wing is off so you can see it from the end. Make sure that it fits without any incursions. An eighth of an inch gap is preferable to no gap. Um, and then progressively work to the next rib while the other rib is in place. And then work to the next rib. Um, get them all fit so you know they're exactly the right size and you will have to do that ugly mess of, of trimming down later. <sighs> Mix resin, make up some micro, put on some tapes. Okay, we're actually installing a rib. We've got a little bit of flock stock stacked in here. Micro stacked around the entire perimeter. There's the groove here and open for the 
um, conduit tube. Now we go in, squish up against that outside rib. <coughs> Make sure we got flax traveling out over there. And we got Michael coming out at the top, and I do. And I've got my drywall screw already in place down here at the bottom. Make sure I, you can see what I can see. Yep, there we go. Let you focus in. And uh, drop it down a little bit lower so you can see what I'm seeing. And the drywall screw I had in there dropped out. Make sure I'm lined up. And you're saying he's got his fat head in place. Glenn, can you... Uh, I'm alright, actually. Check and see if I'm inside the rib. I am at that. Slightly snug in place. I can see the micro squishing out on both sides. Yes, and I think you saw it too, I hope. I'll put one in the back, one here at the top to keep it from moving. And then in the meantime, Glenn's making up the tape, 260 by 2, which works out to 45 by 16. Back with you then. We referred to earlier a beveled area on the rib. And that was because there's no way, excuse me, that you could get material in here without wiping a good portion of it off as you put the rib in because it has to be slid in from the side. Now I've pre-packed these surfaces with micro to fill up the core. As you can see, after you get the stuff packed in, you can remove the excess quite handily. Don't pre-wet all these surfaces. You can wet the area that you're going to put the micro in, but don't pre-wet pre the pre -wet the rib and everything else with it. Just wet that which you need to wet. Pack it in from one side. The other side, the skin goes right against the interior surface of the strake. Go ahead and pack it in there. And it, I'm doing this rib first because it it, um, it's just easier for me to do this way. Think about it before you do anything. Well, it's been only a few hours, and there are the ribs. Three hours. And you notice the holes going through there. Let's make sure the screws get through the rib. And we're going to get closer here so you can get a real good look at all this stuff. There's the cleft on the edge. Oops, excuse me. Didn't mean to make any of you this ill. There's the tape. Tapes on the inside, tapes on the tops. There we go. That rib there. Waxed. Tapes. It's the entire length. We'll reproduce the same thing on the opposite side tomorrow. And we'll also, tomorrow, fit the ribs. There are several ribs that we need to do. We, tomorrow we'll do the wheel well. We'll tie the diagonal to the opposing diagonal, and they'll meet at, this, at an intersection. Um, I'll give you the dimension for that um, tomorrow when we actually get together for this. And uh, we're waxing up the bolts to run through here and packing. Sorry, Glenn, I just. <coughs> uh, and we'll pack blocks around the end of the bolt, make sure that a long bolt won't uh, protrude into the fuel tank. And you notice we have the level on the wing and the ribs in place. Now we're going to go check the other side. The other side's all bonded up and solidified. The guys are going to put the ribs in that today put the wing on and make sure they get the same result. We're also going to check the um, relative incidence positions, the leading edge of 
of the BL23 rib. Um, and then, of course, the inboard rib is, is easily self-defined by its placement against the end of the wing. But that position right there, BL23, if it's, if it's right, <coughs> then we just want to make the other side symmetrical to it. If it's not right, well, we're kind of stuck with it. We need somebody to make the other side symmetrical to it anyway. Uh, it couldn't have changed much, though. Now I'm going to take the wing off and fit the top uh, skin on by tapering the ribs. Barry, can you point to the leading edge forward section top of the rib? Right in there, go forward, now go aft. This is the area of greatest change. Back to about there, and then the rib, then the, the rib will no longer need to be beveled, but from where his finger is forward, I'll have to chamfer the, in, the outboard edge of the rib off, and I'll do that with all three ribs. And uh, then I'll notch the leading, ed the leading edge overlap area of the upper strake to accommodate the rib, <coughs> and slip it over the top. And we also microed last night, as you can see, along the underside of the strake. Okay, we put the top back on, clicked it in place, um, trimmed it until it's nearly a no-load condition. When you put the bottom strake on, it's almost impossible to to generate the same no-load condition you had when you had the upper and lower strake click out together on the leading edges and slid onto the spar. Invariably, when you clamp the lower strake in place and put the pins on the side of its own weight, it's likely to shift slightly. <clears throat> Not really much of a problem so long as whatever occurs on the right side, the result of sagging and bonding in ribs, that you repeat on the opposite side. Now, this point is fairly well fixed because you know it's symmetrical to the opposite side. And you go to this point. This is the only variable. It, it can shift in this fashion. Um, so when you get everything bonded in place and you discover that you have an eighth of an inch before you touch the rib that you knew touched before in a no-load condition, <laughs> you look at this outboard end here and you discover that you've got Oh, an eighth of an inch or so to push down to make it make contact. What you need to do is make sure that you reproduce whatever occurs on one side on the opposing side. Um, that can be done if you put the airplane together symmetrically at the same time, and you can control these points um, with pieces of wood down to the floor and then checking with the water level to make sure that they are the same. <coughs> We're working the other direction. We've started by bonding together one side so that we can, in a timely fashion, get this stuff on videotape while the other guys are catching up. Uh, now all we have to do is reproduce the same effort on the opposite side. That's very simple to do with the water level or by putting a level across here and measuring down to this point, side to side, while it's level. These minor preloaded conditions are no sweat. I put a Clico in the front. And I can see right here that it pushes me up one-eighth of an inch. I reproduce these points on the other side so that when I push down I get the same results. And essentially I've preloaded the structures ever so slightly, but we've worked it out it's about three pounds of force to make it go down. Everything fits together very well. <coughs> I've got two more ribs to put in place in the wheel well, and we'll show you that as we go along. Uh, back with you again, we've just fitted the baggage area bulkhead, a baggage aft bulkhead, same nomenclature as in the Long Easy. If you measure from the back side of the spar to this bulkhead, it's between 21 and 22 inches. It's somewhere in between. From the back of the spar, uh, BL23, the, the, um, the draw line vertical, using a level that is 28 inches forward. Let's place a, a level here, get the line vertical. We provide you with this template. It's marked BAB. You'll have a little fitting to do. We've got a little bevel here at the top, a little bevel here at the bottom. Um, when you set this rib up, it doesn't hurt to have it vertical as well. Um, it's not imperative that it's vertical, but it will help match this rib in. The other dimension to keep in mind is your rib here is... Um, let me make
make sure I've got this thing set up. It's 10 and 3 quarters of an inch from this, on this surface. Plus or minus a half an inch here, 10 and 3 quarters, and then this will fit better. And the next thing I'm going to do is the wheel well area. Okay, what we're doing at the moment is we're preparing to wear your fingertips right down to the bone. This entire area, from the baggage aft bulkhead here, all the way to the back, you're going to sand every square inch of this interior. Um, the bottom, the, the aft face of the, of the wheel well, the forward face, the top, this section, all the way to the underside of your, of your aft canopy lip. <laughs> you're preparing to lay up seven plies of bid that's going to go from this corner all the way to this surface area aft of the BAB and I'll end the front face of the spar. Your first ply is going to go from this intersection back here to this intersection. And then they're going to taper back one inch per ply. You'll end up with a full seven plies on this face and three of those plies will go all the way up to the bottom side of your canopy frame that sticks down three tenths of an inch. And the reason you're sanding this whole area is that after you're done with that seven ply layup, or before you do the seven ply layup, I'm sorry, you can put your veil in on the bottom, your two ounce cloth that covers up the bottom of these surfaces, so you have a com completely sealed bottom. Uh, this bulkhead will be in place, obviously, and you needn't tape this side of it because you put it in place, tape this side, <clears throat> and then, um, of course, this is going to be cut out, and I'm going to show you that in a moment. We're going to cut this area open, and I'll show you how many plies go around this corner, lapping to the inside surface, around to this front, to this front face, where your fuel gauge will go. Now that that is perfectly clear, <clears throat> we'll uh, go on to the next section. We've cut ourselves a piece of, of uh, polyurethane foam. You'll probably have um, four pound density, either blue or green, possibly brown, to then a cell, three eighths inch thick poly vinyl chloride. Oh, I got this in. Okay. okay. And um, it's 40 inches in length and it's nine inches tall. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to do a little divider right here and I'm going to make sure that it parallels the end. That'll be my very first cut. Now it's going to continue to project this up. Scalpel. There's one right there. Believe it or not, this is what we use. Glenn's uh, wife is an RN. Now then, can you hold that glue on that end? Bring it around this direction. Now I cut the slot right here and right here and I come up that distance and I'm going to cut that through. This is live and in color. Hope this works out because we haven't rehearsed this. Real blood. Real sweat, real tears. Yeah, he's holding the blade right way. Just slide her on down. And lo and behold, we make the end. And we get all the way here. Now we're just going to cut a little slat, a little bubble on this on the end. Is that showing up there, Barry? Can't see it? Oops, yeah, cutting with the back side of the blade. Usually works well. And you'll custom fit as you as you go. Little gaps here, no big deal because you're gonna end up microing this in place and glassing it in place. Now I'm gonna let this go on this end and figure out what my length is is gonna be on this side. Now let's see, I guess I can't do that measuring tape and I can find out exactly how long it's going to be. This works out to 
15 inches in length. So we're going to lay this out here. Okay. And I'm going to cut this off. Still long. You said all too confidently. I still have room to move in a little bit more by beveling this edge back here. Now I do a little taper here. Oops, sorry about that. Just give me a parallel mark there. That's good. the surface. That's the curvature. Now use drywall screws to run into this surface while this whole thing cures up. And I'll buy an awful lot more space as I do this. The interior, you notice, is marked because I have to take the skin here um, I have to make a depression for the skin, so this surface on the is flush with the interior. So I'll sand that down oh, about uh, 35 thousandths to make a gap, and that of course will move me closer to this edge. We're going to do a quick slurry of this. And after I've gotten the slurry on here, I'll thicken it up, fill up any gaps. And uh, I'm going to slurry this surface too down here to a quick thin one. The same thin stuff that I'm putting on a fan. And I'll prime all the areas that I'm going to put this stuff on where all my bonds are going to occur to the foam. And then I'll mix it up to a slightly drier mixture. Now you notice I'm, I'm not... Uh, taking my time because you know how west is. This is the fast west. And it's exactly the right reason that I'm using it is that I'm going to go to dinner after this, come back and this will have hardened enough for me to pull screws or whatever was holding it in place. And then I'll put two plies of bit on the outside lapping one inch all the way around on the exterior, one inch under the interior. I'm also going to run a ply of bid fully up under the inside of this rib. Two ply on the outside here, picking up this exterior surface. And then, uh, of course, after it's hardened here, before I put my glass on, I'll radius this edge and lap one inch to the underside and fully around to this surface. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and finish putting this slurry on, and I'm not going to bore you with the rest of this process. We'll be back with you as we actually put it in place. Okay, we're recording again. Better make sure that I've got the mic hooked up. Do I have the mic? I've got, yes, I've got the mic. All right, you can see where we've... Uh, we'll go right in there and take a look at everything. Right in the middle of nowhere. There is the mic hood corner. Our drywall screw is running from the outside into the foam. I think you can actually see them. There's one there right in the middle of the screen. Visible. It's not a smudge on the foam. And then bonded in there, west around the corner. A piece of foam down there pushing against the side to provide pressure. And there's a, a steel bullet on the other side pushing against the block of foam to hold it against the surface. You can use drywall screws through the foam and into the, into the fiberglass carbon lip there if you wanted to. You'll glass right over top of it. Um, Here's the whole look. I'll give you a shot from the inside. Come on, focus camera. And one from the outside edge. Drywall screws. Remember, this is, these photographs were done by a professional. There's our attachment again. Okay, we've got the 
the top of the foam trimmed, all the micro cleaned up around the perimeter, all the dust sucked off the surfaces, the interior cleaned up in its entirety, and this edge radiused off neatly, measure an inch and a half back, all sanded, this face sanded, this face sanded, all these faces sanded, and the micro cleaned up along the edge. Um, you can either lay this up on foil and put it down and fold it around, or you can just slurry the surfaces and then drape the cloth. Um, we're going to do this on foil. It's your choice. Now we've already trimmed the foam down. Obviously this is going to be infinitely simpler to, uh, to, to do, to trim while in the foam state than it would after glassing. And that's what I would advise that you do. All of these ribs have been trimmed down and um, established that they fit before this is done. All these surfaces are already trimmed. I have no trimming left to do, so that tomorrow I can go right into tea tapes. Tomorrow is Tuesday and is the last full day I'll have here in Great Britain before I'll head home. Um, we'll also, after glassing and intersecting this rib, glassing this surface here, we'll take a rib, bond it in here, and then uh, after doing that rib, I'll cut this section out and bond this rib in place, already made up, intersecting at that point. I got I have to cut this rib out yet. Yeah. It goes right in here. And that will make all of the ribs complete and bonded in. Uh, we can trim the glass off the top of that tomorrow. Put the top on um, the silver tape between the surfaces and do the T-tapes and show you the first step of that process. We'll uh, come back to you a little later this evening and show you the glassing operation. Okay, we're back. We've glassed the, the surfaces. We have two plies, four plies, two plies, one extra ply back here on the bulkhead, this surface. We have two extra plies here in the corner on top of the other way too, because this is the area where your, your hydraulic cylinder is going to do load transmission into the door, standard corner here. And you allow this stuff to wrap around this surface, this corner, inch and a half, and all the way down to the, the uh, relief for the gear door, but nothing um, horizontal. Just let it come off vertical, and you'll trim it when it firms up. There's the two plies on the outside, on both sides. Two plies. And um, we did it as two separate pieces and let the lap occur in the back. You can see the lap right there. Um, you lap one inch onto the bulkhead up front and, and one lap, one at the back, at the bottom, all the way around. And the ribs are in place. We didn't put a tape in here because we're going to cut that away tomorrow and expose that end. But tomorrow we're going to do the T-tapes. A little bit of trimming here, a little bit of trimming on this rib here. And then put the top on, put, mark the positions of all these ribs on the underside of the strake. Put um, duct tape down where these ribs are, lay up two plies of tape. Stack micro on top of all these ribs and squish it down. Let it cure, pop it off, and then lay up two plies of bid, or one ply of bid, I'm sorry, from underneath to the underside of the tape. That's of course after trimming the tapes to about three quarters of an inch on either side, three quarters of an inch or a half an inch on either side. And you'll have, see this T on top. Of course you'll have micro sticking out of either side. Just carefully remove that micro. It'll take you many hours to do so. And you put a very small layer um, of, of um, blocks between this vertical surface and the, and the T on the top and put one ply of bid from here underneath. And you can lay that up on foil, do them all, uh, giving you a complete load transition from all surfaces to the underside of your strake. And then later, you'll sand the entire underside of your strake from here and here outboard. You will not sand the underside here, but you will sand it where your rib, where the side of your strake meets your fuselage. That you'll prepare with a tape for taping onto the side. You lay up a two, out, two ounce layer of cloth on the inside of your strake, and then put flocks on top of your pre-sanded T-tapes on top, and squish your lid down. 
Um, we won't be doing that on this particular tape, but that's the name of this game.